And we do say hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, because we know that the angels say hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that this is not just a place of a visitation. But again, it's a place that you are preparing us for a habitation, for a place in the abode of the living God. Spirit of the living God, we give you permission today to turn us upside down. Shake everything out of us, Lord. Things that we know about, things that we don't know, that maybe we're okay yesterday, but for where we're going in that habitation and the abode in your holiness is no longer acceptable. Those things that you tolerated in the past, you are no longer tolerating. Father, help us to be sensitive to that place. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice, but only you and through you, Holy Spirit, even as those five days, as Reese Howe, through fasting and prayer, was in agonizing intercession, saying, help me, Lord, to be that place and be that person that you can possess me. And then 10 minutes before six on the fifth night, when you came to Reese, Lord, and you said, well, I need an answer. And he was still in agony. And you, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, said to him, would you like me to help you to be ready to say yes? So, Lord, we want it with all of our hearts. The spirit of the living God, we need your help because we are finite, but you are infinite, Lord. So we give you permission today to take us into a place Take us into those places, into the cosmos of who you are and where you are, into the deep things of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Wow. Obviously, I won't be dressed like this when I see my husband. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing him. A couple hours. Uh, one thing, obviously, that we have done for years, and I'm still willing to do it to a point at the age of 64. I'm going, okay, you know, we can tweak them, some things up. But basically, when he has, has had crusades and when he's got meetings or things that he really has to just shut himself in with God, I allow him the privilege to be in a room and be by himself so that he has no distractions and he's not pulled on in any husbandly way Amen. and I allow him to be what shut in with the Lord Amen. so Amen. not always easy but thank the Lord for for being brought up in the ministry as a preacher's kid where you understand the anointing and there is a price to be paid there is a huge price to be paid to walk into that place. I loved what you said, Pastor Mike, about waiting on the Lord. Because so often we hear s stories about angels and the angelic and that mystical place and being taken out into the cosmos and flying and going into the heavens. And we say, take us there, take us there. But again, the price that this man and woman of God have paid, the warfare, the attacks, the being misunderstood. But let me tell you something. They are trailblazers. They are trailblazers. The Bible says many are called and few are chosen. And you know why this bishop and this first lady have the people on the front row that they have? Because they are chosen and set apart. And I love what he said. Don't call yourself chosen if you're just called. And don't call yourself called if you're not even called. All these self-appointed 
Apostles, they're nothing more than weird astronauts. <laughs> because the Bible says a gift will make room for itself. Your gift will make room for you. But the Bible also say, says, know them by their fruits. Because like Brother Miles said last night, he said, you will get before the Lord, but Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out demons? Didn't I lay hands on the sick? And the Lord will say, I never knew you. I never knew you. I can give you a gift, a physical gift, and you might think, oh my goodness, I could give you a lot of money. Oh my goodness, this is an amazing person. I've got to put them on my board. We've had some weird people on our board that I've had to pray out that came in with their money and came in with their agendas and came in with their little wives that were Jezebels. Because once God gives you a gift, he doesn't take it away. But you are known by your fruits. You are known by your fruits. You're known by your integrity. You're known by your agendas. You're known by your motives. Years ago, I was 33 years of age, and at the age of 33, at 3 o'clock in the morning, the Lord took me into my family room, and it was the first time that I heard the audible voice of the Lord. And I know a lot of you are saying, wow, I want to hear the audible voice of the Lord. No, you don't. Because, you know, God knows when you're ready for it. Because when you really hear the audible voice of the Lord... We again are finite and he's infinite. Literally, if you feel your whole being is going to explode. And you actually wonder, like Isaiah, if you're just going to say, woe is me, I'm undone. But that night at 3 o'clock in the morning, the audible voice of the Lord said, I will shake everything that can be shaken. And only those with their feet on the ground, their eyes on me, and people of character and integrity and pure motives will stand through this. He said, I will allow you to see things. I will allow you to hear things. I don't want you to go to Benny with it. I want you to do what I tell you to do. Say what I tell you to say. And when obedience is done, disobedience will be punished. When obedience is done, which again is definitely a part of being an intercessor, because 99% obedience is still disobedience. 99% obedience is still disobedience. So when he said, when obedience is done, disobedience will be punished. And then he said, this is your assignment. Each and every one of you in this room has been, been given a God-given assignment. Everyone on this front row that are in ministry have been given an assignment. He said, do you know the difference between an assignment and a chore? Do you know the difference between an assignment or a chore? And I said, well, obviously, if you're asking me, I probably don't. <laughs> and this is what he said to me. An assignment is something that only you can do. An assignment is something only you can do. Nobody else can do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you. But a chore is something that needs to be done, but other people can get it done for you. It doesn't have to be done by you. It doesn't have to be done. So I can say, I need some chai tea. Can you go get it for me? I don't have to go get it myself. I can send somebody, but I still have my chai tea. Or the bishop can say, can you run here to get this for, the, for Pastor Benny or whatever? Because he, my husband needs it. But he doesn't have to do it. So what we don't understand at times is when God gives somebody an assignment, it is their assignment and it's not for you to dissect, like the man of God said. It is not for you to dissect because you do not walk in their shoes and you don't understand the level of, of obedience. I'll never forget in 96 sitting at, on the floor with my husband, Pastor Benny, with Oral Roberts and his wife, Evelyn, as they came to speak at our church the following day. And as we sat there, again, he explained how the healing mantle was the greatest of all mantles, 
with the most intense price to be paid of all the mantles. And he looked at us and he said, there was a time, Pastor Benny and Suzanne, that you could have said, it's too intense. The price is too hard. The warfare is too much. I'm losing my kids. This is happening. This is happening. I don't think I can handle this. I'm not made for this. I wasn't born for this. I want an easier life. He said there was a time that you could have said, I changed my mind. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't know it was going to be this intense. And God would have released you. But he said, you've come too far down the birth canal. 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 That he said, if you were to change your mind now, God would have to take you home and take you out. I'll never forget Bishop and First Lady in 1984, hearing Brother Oral Roberts say that the Lord said to him that, he, I guess he was living outside of Tulsa or wherever he was living, and he thought because he was Brother Oral Roberts, he could live where he wanted to. And the Lord said, unless you move back to, to Tulsa and unless you raise up missionaries in your school, I'm going to take you home. And I remember at that age, I think I was 25, saying, hmm, we have such a loving father. I can't imagine him taking somebody home just because they're living somewhere they shouldn't be living and not living where they're supposed to be living and not being where God has ordained them to be. And then all of a sudden, months later, it was like the Lord said, this is none of your business. You have no right to judge. God called us to Florida. It was never God's will for us to move to California. It was never God's will for us to leave the church. God came to my husband twice in the church and said, don't you ever leave this church. Don't ever leave Florida. And I can remember when we were living in California, and he'd be off singing hallelujah and in crusades having a marvelous time. And I'm like in the emergency room with my kids and under attack, and my kids were under attack. And I remember saying to the Lord, what in the world is going on? And the Lord said this to me. He said, as long as your husband is in my perfect will, I, I will be a husband to you when he's away. And I'll be a father to your children if you ask me to. He said, on the other hand, if he just goes because he wants to go, he becomes restless or he can't say no. And when people are too strong with him, you know, he, a lot of times he's good in front of crowds, but one-on-one -on -one when people are, you know, strong, sometimes he just has a hard time saying no. He said, you and your kids are an open target for the enemy. You and your kids are an open target. Men of God in this place, make sure that you are in your assignment. Make sure that you are in the place and in the city and you are in doing what God has called you to do. Why? Because otherwise it opens up your wife and it opens up your kids to unnecessary warfare. I had to go to realms in the spirit with the demonic realm over the 20 years of living really in hell in California because we were not ordained to be there. I was under attack. I was 24-7, just in intercession, nights of prayer, just hardly any sleep. Why? Because we were out of God's will. And we were open targets. And to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is given, much is required. And as the Lord gave me this assignment, he said, again, this is your assignment. And literally, and he said, and the anger of the Lord, these people, and thank God for your sermon, because we say he's a God of grace. We can just live like we want. He understands. We'll just all go to heaven. Hallelujah. His wrath is as perfect as his mercy. There's a side to God that's coming. The days of Ananias and Sapphira and the days where God's saying, I've had enough and I'm not putting up with this, not just in the church, because judgment begins in the house of the Lord, but in our government, in this nation. 
That's why it's time for the intercessors to realize to put your fatigues on. You show up in your fatigues, you don't even have to say a whole lot. When the Lord gave me that assignment, he said to me, just your presence will have nerve principalities and powers without you opening up your mouth. Just your presence will unnerve principalities and powers without you opening up your mouth. And I was only 33, and I said, Lord, I said, you know how it feels to walk in a room and you haven't said anything or done anything, and you're hated, and you're not liked, and they're lying about you? I said, I'm trying not to take it personally. Not realizing what a compliment. What a compliment that you've got to a place in God. That you just show up. Why? Because you have a rank like Dr. Francis, like Carmela, like this man and woman of God, like Ray, like Linda, like this bishop, like the first lady, like my husband and I have. You have a rank. And when you show up, every principality and power and every ruler of the darkness knows the rank and who you are. Knows who you are. I can remember years ago, in the early 2000s, when we lived in California, a big name person on television around the world invited us to dinner and showed us everything in their library. And oh, it was amazing until I got time for dinner. And all of a sudden, here comes, pulls out the bottle of wine, the most expensive wine, and he's pouring his wine. But you know what? God called me to be a Nazarite. He had me take a Nazarite vow. Do not let alcohol touch your lips. And God is raising up a Nazarite generation. He's raising up a Nazarite people that are set apart and are consecrated to the Lord and will not compromise. And I'll never forget, as he's handing out the wine and he puts it in, tries to put it in my hand, I said, no, thank you. He says, nobody tells me no. I said, well, there's a, there's a first time for everything. I said, God's told me to take a Nazarite vow, not to let it touch my lips. Because years ago, when I had that assignment with a shaking, he said, when obedience is done, disobedience will be punished. And that was my assignment. Like, I'm going to allow somebody with a religious spirit and a spirit of witchcraft try to bully me and tell me you're going to drink a glass of wine because you're in my house? I don't think so. And I'll never forget my husband pulling me to the side. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says that if you make a vow that the husband has a right to break the vow and everything. And I said, I understand that. But I didn't make the vow because I wanted to make the vow. God asked me to make a vow. And so your yes overrules, God's no overrules your yes. And I'm not going to drink it. He says, oh my goodness, they're upset. I said, I don't care. Do you want me to leave? We are coming to a place, Church of God, that there can't be any more compromise. If it's okay for you and God says it's okay for you, then fine. But if it's not okay for me and God tells me no, don't you try to make me compromise and don't make other people compromise on the word and what God told you a no for. And I'll never forget, several days later, he was on national television around the world and when you know, Somebody came to my house, and I've never had somebody tell me no, and they wouldn't accept my wine. And I'll never forget the man of God that was with us and his wife showed up at the studio. And I'm like, what's he here for? He goes, because the guy is mad. And you were on national television, and he told, you, he told all about you. So he's here because he thinks that we need to do a TV program publicly to apologize. I said, how long do I have to just stand in front of the TV camera and not let it happen? Because I apologize to no one. And I'm not going to allow you to apologize when people are bullying us with their demonic powers just because they think because they have a, what they think is a high rank, which is no rank at all, 
trying to make me compromise on my convictions and what I know God said no for me. So it's not happening. Your obedience is part of your intercession. There's people in this place that have compromised. Even in marriage, people say, oh, well, my body belongs to him, his body belongs to me, so if this is what he wants, then whatever. Except my body belongs to the Lord. My body belongs to my husband, and I thank God that we walk a life of holiness. But when I got married, I got married to the Lord. And there's no compromise. There's no compromise. God has called us to live a holy life. God has called us to be set apart. God is calling us to be Nazarites. You look at the life of Reese Howe that changed history. When the Lord literally told him, you're going to take your hat off and never wear it again. Back in those days, taking your hat off was basically like taking your clothes off and going outside. Because no man walked without a hat. But God said, you are a Nazarite. And you will be obedient. You will be obedient. Why was he able to change history? Because of his obedience. Because of his obedience. Because of his obedience. It's obedience. It's surrender. It's abandonment. It's a lifestyle of holiness. I love what this brother said this morning about waiting on the Lord. I can remember several years ago after being with Dr. Miles and Katie and just really be moved to just really wait and spend more time with the Lord. And I had been up all night at midnight and I was, being, was praying. And it finally got to about 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, well, there's my three hours. And the Lord says, I need you a little bit longer. So finally when I got to 5 o'clock in the morning, I said, okay, I did five hours. I did a little bit more than what I do when, when you call me at 5 o'clock in the morning. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, you are called from 5 to 8 o'clock. He said, what you just gave me was your offering. Your 5 to 8 is your tithe of your day. Your 5 to 8 is your tithe of your day. We tend to think that tithing is just money or service. But God is calling us. My three hours might be required of me or a Reese Howe. Or these people. Or an all-nighter. God might be calling you for half an hour. He might be calling you for 15 minutes. But that is your tithe of the day. I will be so excited when we get back to all-nighters. Where we grew up literally knowing how to take a hold of the horns of the altar. And be in prayer night and day. Day and night. Night and day. I live for those nights. I live for those moments. After many nights, three years ago, after being around... Francis and Carmela and Katie Seuss and Dr. Linda, I remember spending nights of prayer, nights of prayer. And all of a sudden, and I'm speaking it to the speakers prophetically, all of a sudden I was taken into a vision. And I literally was on my outside porch where we have a pool, and I was looking at the pool next door. And all of a sudden, the pool next door got, got moved from that house and went all the way back till I couldn't see it. But all of a sudden, it was no longer a confined body of water. When it came back, it came back as an ocean. It came back as an ocean. It came back as an ocean. It came back as an ocean and it attached itself to me. Attached itself. Out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. But that's a, there's a place in the cosmos of God that is deeper than a river. It's oceans. It's unlimited. It's unlimited. Why am I walk of obedience did God send me for three months to be at Reese's house? To redig the wells, to open up the gates. Because my forefathers and my parents built altars in that nation. They built altars in that land. And he said, go back to the ancient ruins. Go back to the ancient altars and redig and rebuild and build and go into a deeper place than they went to. I had not seen, no ear heard, those things that God has ordained for us. A year and a half ago, I had a vision where I was in my parents' church. And I was in the back row sitting with my mom. And we were by ourselves, and there was a concert going on. And all of a sudden, in this vision, I'm not sure if it was a vision or whatever, because it was like, like it was so real that sometimes it's like, am I in my body or am I out of my body? 
But anyway, um, so my dad came in, and he looked at me, and he said, come with me. Come with me. And I kind of looked at him like, Dad, do I take Mom with me? Because she has some dementia, and I don't want to leave her by herself. But somehow I knew my mom was going to be okay. And he said, come with me. And we walked out of my parents' church and walked into the parking lot. And I'm saying this to you on the front row and for you out there. So all of a sudden, he had keys in his hand. He said, I'm giving you my keys. 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 And it was a huge white truck. But it was bigger than a white truck. It was more like an Israeli army tank. And I had a hard time getting up in it. But I realized when I got up in it, I didn't know how to drive it because it was a stick shift. And I think part of the reason that God in the obedience had me go to Reese's house was because he said to be able to take a tank and to be an army and be in a rank that is a general in the army of the Lord to change history, to move nations, to change this nation where we put our President Trump back in the place that we voted, that we've ordained him to be in. We have got to know how to drive the tank. But the only thing that's going to give you the diesel gasoline, that's the only thing that's going to give you the gasoline, whether it's for your car, for your moped, for your motorcycle, whatever it is, in the spirit realm that God has you on or in is prayer. Prayer is your gasoline. Prayer is your gasoline. Prayer is your gasoline. Prayer is your gasoline. Worship is your gasoline. I heard something said, Pastor Linda, decades ago. You can tell how popular the pastor is by who shows up Sunday morning. You can, show, you can tell how popular the evangelist is by who shows up Sunday night. But they said you can tell how popular Jesus is by who shows up to the prayer meetings. <laughs> who shows up for prayer. Who shows up for him. The Bible says, the Lord says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Not a house of deliverance, not a house of healing, not even a house of salvation. All of that comes out of a foundation built on prayer, built on the word of God. Many, many years ago, I was preparing to go to a, a, a crusade in Charlotte with my husband, with the Shabdas, and I'll never forget having the TV on, it was TBN, and I was packing, and I heard Jesse Duplantis say something very interesting. He said that he heard the Lord say, I'm very disappointed with my children today. They're very disobedient. They're very disobedient, and I'm very upset. So Jesse Duplantis said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just cancel everything, cancel all my appointments today to minister and be with you? So he canceled everything. He canceled everything. And he said, I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to be in your presence. Like the Lord told me years ago, unless something's an absolute emergency, there's nothing that can't wait 24 hours. Unless there's something that's an absolute emergency, there's nothing that can't wait 24 hours. And I'll never forget going to the crusade. And then Saturday, my husband flew off. And Punky and I decided we're going to stay because we wanted to go to Shabdash Church. And that afternoon, we put on Terry McCallman and the worship, and the worship, and the worship. And we just got into that place with God. And we worshiped, and we worshiped, and we ministered to the Lord. After many hours, I went off and had dinner with the Shabdas. Punky stayed in the hotel, and I came back. And we were staying in the same room, obviously two beds. And so I went to bed that night. A few hours later, Punky got up, went to the restroom. As she came in, I said, I'm having an encounter right now with the Lord. I'm having a visitation. I used to have a little saying, and I've got to get back to this. But I used to say to my kids, have I told you lately that I love you? I love you with all my heart. 
Have I told you today that I miss you? I miss you with all of my heart. Have I told you today that I adore you? I adore you with all of my heart. And this would go on and every so often Lily would say, have I told you today that I love you, mommy? I love you with all my heart. <laughs> and I said, okay, I haven't said that to her. She's a little more sensitive. I need to say it to her. a little bit more to her than maybe to the others. Have I told you, Lily, that I love you? Because you get to the place in God. You get to the place, just like with a husband and wife, in that intimate place with God that you know what he needs. You know what he wants. You create an atmosphere for him. You create an atmosphere. Because even though you're sleeping at night, he's awake. Even though you're sleeping at night, he's awake. So if he likes Terry McCallman, I like Kent Henry... Different ones, Judy Jacobs, Karen Wheaton, Nancy Harmon, Gaithers. There's certain atmospheres that take me into that place. So even when I'm sleeping in the other room, I keep the worship on because he's awake. And I'm wanting that atmosphere to be conducive so when he wakes me up and calls me to that place of intercession, he's already been ministered to before I come into that place and minister to him. So as I was sleeping, literally at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I have to say whether in the body or not, I'm not even sure. But you get to the place with the Lord, and even in that last level of intercession where it's silent intercession, that you're so in that place of being possessed that there's no groanings, there's no sound, it's silent. But yet intercession is happening. So all of a sudden, from his heart to mine, he said, Have I told you today that I love you? I love you with all my heart. And then from my heart to his, have I told you today that I love you? I love you with all my heart. And then from his heart to mine, have I told you today that I've missed you? I missed you with all my heart. And then from my heart to his with no words, have I told you today that I've missed you? I missed you with all my heart. Then he says, have I told you today that I adore you? I adore you with all my heart. And then from my heart to his, have I told you today that I adore you? And this went on for hours and hours and hours. And as I said, whether I was in my body or not, I honestly don't know. And it doesn't matter. But all of a sudden, after hours, Bishop and First Lady, I heard from his heart to mine, have I told you today that I worship you? I worship you with all my heart. And my Pentecostal mind said, oh, we've been... I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but okay. Lord, have I told you today that I worship you? I worship you with all my heart. And from his heart to mine, have I told you today that I worship you? I worship you with all my heart. And went back and forth, back and forth. And suddenly I realized, Lord, you need some loving. You need some worship. You need some adoration. You need to be ministered to. So I got out of my bed. And in the other part of the suite, where the music was going all, all night long, I got away from Punky, I got away from the bedroom, and I went into that place, and I went face down, and I ministered to the Lord, and I gave him what he needed. I gave him what he needed for hours and hours and hours. And finally, I realized, oh my goodness, it's time to go to church. And I said to Punky, I'm so glad I'm not preaching, because I don't even know where I'm at right now. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. And I walked into the church, and they got into praise and worship, and I'll never forget Pastor Mahesh going, wow, it's so good to have Suzanne here from the crusade. So it's going to be, he said, he's, he said he was going to start the preaching. Bonnie was going, Pastor Bonnie was going to preach, and he said, and then Suzanne will finish it off. I'm going, where am I? And so I shared about what happened to me that night. I shared with him what happened. I shared with the congregation. When I went to get on that plane, that afternoon, I sat with my daughter, Alicia. All of a sudden, I opened up the book, The Interior Castle by Teresa of Avila. Because you get to a place, and whether you understand it or not, you'll understand eventually, hopefully, as you wait on the Lord. But all of a sudden, as I opened up, that you go through the first door, and then you go into the second, and then you go into the third. But by the time you go into the fourth, you're so intertwined in him. You're so in that abode with him 
that he pulls you. It's not even you having to try to make it happen. He pulls you into that place. He pulls you into the very intimate, into him. You into him, him into you, where there's no, no separation. And as I opened up the book and took the, started reading the first page, I suddenly realized because of my ministering to the Lord, because I didn't say, Lord, I already ministered hours yesterday afternoon, but I gave him what he needed, like waiting on the Lord, like he said, whether it takes 20 minutes, whether it takes 45, whether it takes hours. I want you so much. I'm so passionate in love with you. I'm so in that place with you that whatever, however, however long it takes, I am going to draw myself into you. And as I began to read that book, literally, as I opened up the first page, and then I opened up the second page of the different doors, all of a sudden, the book went into me and I went into the book. Because you've got to understand, church, that there's impartations, not just with the laying on of hands, but there's impartation through books. That's why I want to encourage you to absolutely get every book Get every scarf, get everything you can from this man, these men and women of God. But I'm also going to give you a warning. Be careful about books. Because in 96, somebody came into my house with a book from a Christian bookstore and said, oh, you've got to read this. I said, get the book out of my house. Uh-uh. I said, not a good book. Get it out. Oh, this will open up your understanding of deliverance, spiritual warfare. You've been so sheltered all your life. This will open up your understanding. I said, get it out of my house. She said, nothing happened to her, so I should read it. And again, I went against my gut feeling. I, get, I went against what I knew was right. And I took it into my house, and I began to read it. The first night, nothing happened. The second night, nothing happened. By the third night at 4 o'clock in the morning, I had hands as real as my hands around my throat, choking me and trying to take me out and trying to kill me. Be careful of clothing, of jewelry, of books. If you're not sure, go to your pastor and say, somebody's trying to give me this book, or my relative read it and they told me I should read it. What do you think? Should I do it? Because what ended up happening, people didn't understand including the person that brought the book into my house, that they actually had brought a curse into my life and into my home and opened me up to an attack. And so what ended up happening? I was sent away for three weeks. If you handed me a cigarette, I wouldn't even know how to hold it, let alone puff it, because I never, ever did any of that stuff. But unfortunately, through this book and people not understanding that I was under attack, I was sent away and forced on medication. And for 16 years, I was addicted. And it took a divorce, and it took me going to Betty Ford to totally be able to come off of the stuff. Well, you don't know what it's like to have somebody that's addicted and whatever. We've got to be careful that we don't judge. Because we don't know why that, that happened to them. We don't understand when they're on the front lines and everything, and somebody hands them a book or somebody says, Oh, I've got this, this shirt that, that was mine that I want you to have. And we don't understand that they want to be married to your husband and they have got some curses on it because they're wanting you dead. And that's why they're handing it to you. There's impartation. That's why, again, this man and woman of God and in each and every one of you take their books, buy their scars, buy these things. Because when you buy this, when you abide in me, I said this was our verse for our batch in resale, all about John 15, the abiding. As I put this on, I'm going deeper into that abiding place, deeper into the vine, deeper into that place. But I want to tell you, man and woman of God, if you are pastor's wives, take your position, take your rank. Don't you let anybody try to take your place, especially as the head intercessor. That is your assignment. That is your assignment. And unless you have a Jonathan David covenant person that really has your back and will hold up your arms, don't let anybody take your position as head intercessor. When I was 26 years of age, 
I had a women's meeting in our church, and this lady came up. I thought she was in her late 50s, but now that I'm 64, I think she was probably, I don't know, unless she just looked old, but she probably was in her 70s. But she looked just as normal as normal could be. Everything about her, nothing seemed weird. And she says, God has sent me to this church. I said, oh, that's nice. He's told me that I'm going to be the head intercessor. I said, oh, really? That's interesting because he's told me I'm the head intercessor. And she said, no, no, he's told me. I said, well, that's interesting because this is our church. This is my husband. And he's told me. They think just because you're young that you're just sweet. You don't have to be bullied by people's demons. So I said, oh, well, what church do you come from? Faith Assembly. And who's the pastor? Pastor Arnold. And what street is it on? Goldenrod. And just like this, the Lord says she's a witch. And I'm not talking about a Pentecostal witch, which they're just as bad at times. I'm talking about a bona fide occultist witch. Because let me tell you something. If you're doing anything for God, like these speakers, they are going to infiltrate your churches. They're going to infiltrate your staff. They're going to infiltrate around you. That's why you have to have discernment. And I literally let her talk, and I kept pulling questions out of her. And I finally looked at her, and I said, the Lord tells me you're a witch. And if you've come here to sit in your little triangles and try to mess with me and my husband and mess with my congregation and my family, you have come to the wrong place. Do I make myself clear? Because you are the first lady. This is the only lady. This is the, the father and mother of the house. How dare anybody come in from, I don't care who they are and what ministry that they can come from, that they think that they can come in. Yes, right now, we are under the authority of the bishop. We are under the authority of the first lady. We have been given total freedom. But let me tell you something. If I come next month to their church, I don't walk in. Yes, I'm Mrs. Benny Hinn. But I don't walk in and take their people to the side and say, I have a prophetic word for you. Or more a pathetic word. It's more pathetic than prophetic. Because there's order. There's order. There's order. There's got to be order that returns into the house of the Lord. Know those that labor among you. Benny used to have a crusade. And there was this one lady that used to show up all the time. And then after his crusade, she'd find out what room he was in. So she could just get the same room and just lay in his bed. And just, oh my goodness. Space cadets. And I'll never forget leaving a crusade, and there were a lot of people on the staff, and she ended up in the same plane. And they said, we don't know what to do with this lady. Because she shows up, and as soon as we get to Orlando, the van's there to pick us up, and she gets right in the van with us. I said, really? And what do you guys do? I said, well, she just says she's getting in. What are we supposed to do? I said, you say no? They said, well, she's been doing it for months. I said, she's messed with the wrong mama bear. So when we got to the airport, I said, come here. I said, this van is for Orlando Christian Center. And we are only liable with insurance for our staff. And Lord forbid if something should happen, we wouldn't want something to happen to you. I know you would understand that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you to a taxi, and I'm going to pay the taxi to take you where you need to go. Goodbye. Because like my mom always says, sometimes you pull people to you, to you with one hand, and you push them away with the other. And there's times that you have to do that. Because God will bring people into your life. He will bring even... Friends are what you think are friends into your life, but the enemy will bring people into your life too that are assigned to distract you. And oh, I'll do this and I'll clean your house and oh, I'll make you food and everything else. Be careful. Be careful. And I'll never forget her sitting in the service and I could feel her trying to astral project into me. And at the end of the service, I said, I know you're leaving tomorrow. And I just want you to know, here's $40.
because you're not calling us anymore and you're not getting in our van. So don't try. But here's $40. And if you ever want to come back and visit us, you might want to have a little extra money in your pocket because we are not a little bell man that's just going to come to your beck and call. People say that's mean. No, it's wisdom. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. Several weeks later, I got a letter saying, you are one of the kindest yet strongest women I've ever met in my life. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> We've got to have discernment. We've got to have discernment. Years ago, and he talked about waiting on the Lord. When the Lord starts taking you into those encounters, he starts taking you, Moses, to the mount of the Most High God. Be careful that you don't try to take people in with you or up with you or in your house when this is happening. Years ago, I'll never forget Pastor Michelle coming in my house, and I was again having a Teresa of Avila in interior castle encounter. And Pastor Michelle said, oh, my goodness, the glory of God's here. Do you mind if I bring somebody in a couple of days? She needs a lot of deliverance. Well, I had just had hernia surgery, and I was very vulnerable. To the place that when Sister Ruth Heflin died, the Lord wouldn't even allow me to go to the funeral. He said, you're too weak to be around the spirit of death. You're not going. Even for Ruth Heflin, you're not going. That was like painful. But I said, okay, Lord, I was obedient. And so here this happens. Pastor Michelle saying, can we bring this person in? The glory of God's in the house, but I was still vulnerable. So a couple of days later, my husband was out of town, and here she comes in with a friend of ours. And I barely had the strength to open the door, and I got back in the bed. And she was standing beside me, and this person was at the foot of my bed. And she said, can you minister to her? Worst mistake of my life. I'll never get, forget Dr. Linda and Bishop. As I got up and walked toward the foot of the bed, I don't even know if I said in the name of Jesus. I don't know if I laid hands on her. All I know is the Lord said, did I need your help? Did I need your help? And when he did, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit left my body. I know what David said, and it had to have happened to him Dr. Miles, for him to have said, take not your spirit from me. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you, but trust me, it'd be easier to just take your clothes off and just say, can we do this rather than that? Because you are absolutely undone. And I said to Dr. Michelle, oh my God, I grieved the Lord. The Holy Spirit, he just literally went out of my body. And Pastor Michelle said, oh, but God understands. I said, oh no, he doesn't. He didn't leave your body, he left mine. Get up, go, go, go. Leave, leave, leave. And for 25 minutes, I was on my face saying, Holy Spirit, I am so sorry. Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry. I will never do that again. I will never do that again. Let me tell you something. It comes freely, but it will cost you everything. It will cost you everything. And as God takes you into the cosmos, into the ocean, and expands you to the ocean of the cosmos into those places. He's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And you literally have to say, God, do I have permission to even bring other than my family into this house? Do I even have permission to have this going on in this house when I'm having this interior castle, when I'm having these mystical places and I'm being taken into the spirit? Because as I said, just as quickly as he comes in, when you get to that place in him, he will leave. It's only happened to me one time. I hope I learned my lesson. I hope I learned my lesson. Now this man and woman of God need an army. Like Rod Parsley told me years ago that the Lord told him, unless you build up an end time army, you are not going to make it for end times. Like the Lord told me with the cloud of witnesses when Reese Howe was there five years ago, you will raise up a Reese Howe militant army. If we don't have an army around us, if we're not the militant army around you two, and, and Dr. Miles and Carmela and Linda and Ray and this man and a woman of God, there could be casualties, like John Paul Jackson said. John Paul Jackson was taken out before his time. Kim Clement was taken out before his time. Hell will freeze over before anybody messes with these two. Or anybody messes with these two. Or anybody messes with these two. Because Linda and I are in covenant with you. 
We're in covenant with you, Dr. Miles and Carmela. We're in covenant with you, men and women of God. That whatever we have to do night and day, and that's why we have this prayer call that we will stand in the gap and we will help you hold up your arms and we will help you raise up an army. Now, I love what Pastor Michelle Carell says, and I'm getting ready to close in a few minutes. But she says when she goes anywhere to the nation, she has Team A, Team B, and Team C. Team A is before you go, before you have a crusade, Team B is while you're singing hallelujah and people are being ministered to and people are being healed. But then what people don't realize is after this conference and you've been touched by the living God and you've been in a place where oh, I'm so full and I'm having encounters and I'm being taken up in the spirit. What happens to this man and woman of God? Come Monday morning, come Tuesday morning, come Wednesday morning. There's got to be a Team C. That says, you know what? You don't even have to worry about cooking. We'll cook for you. We'll clean your house. We'll bring you food. We want you to rest. We want you to be ministered to. What can we do? What we can, can we do to help out? Now, I want this man and woman of God to come forward. And I want the prayer warriors that are approved in leadership by your ministry to come up. even your worship team, the ones, your, your sons and daughters. But we're also going to put Mike, Pastor Mike and, and his wife, we're going to put you in here too because you're part of the speakers, Camilla, and you can stand for your husband. I want to circle around around them. I let Pastor Mike and his wife and Carmela come in. Y'all are all approved leadership, right? Okay. I, uh, Pastor Mike, I want you more in the middle, and then I want the prayer warriors around 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 you. Just make a circle around them. How many are ready to be part of the army of the Lord? How many are part, willing to be part of standing for this nation, standing for this man and woman of God, standing for Pastor Mike and his wife, for Dr. Miles, for Camilla, for Dr. Linda and Ray? Okay. Spread out a little bit more in the circle. Now I'm going to tell you the difference between prayer warriors and intercessors. You ready for this? So you've got the man and woman of God. You've got the speakers that now need protection. We're still in the conference. But they need protection as they leave. They need protection for their children, for their ministries, for their work, for their homes, for on the plane, for stepping out. So they don't get the warfare for stepping into an assignment. So you've got this man and women of God. Um, can you go get me? Mary, you, you can sit down, sweetie, okay? Huh? Are, are you one of the speakers at this conference? Okay. 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 Thank you, Lord. How many know he's made your hands to war? When you pray, it's not just with your mouth. It's not just with your feet. It's not just what he's made your hands to war. If somebody comes in and starts messing with your kids, they start messing with your husband, they start taking your, coming into your house and messing with your belongings, do you just say, you say, you're messing with me? You're messing with my kids? What part of don't you understand? I might not be able to do what I did in the 70s, but I could. You can take that authority in Jesus' name with your hands because he's made your hands to war. 
So sometimes you show up with your fatigues. Oh, it's wrong, wrong hand. I'm a prophetic intercessor, guys, okay? <laughs> How many are ready for the Lord to put boxing, his boxing gloves on you? That say, I am serious. But let me tell you something. When you sign up for an army as intercessors, it's a 24-7. It's not like I'll show up at 10 o'clock, but I won't go to the 6 o'clock prayer meeting in the morning and intercede for the pastor and his wife and the speaker so they can sleep in, so they can rest. But we're on the wall. We're in the wall for our nation. We're in the wall for our president. We're in the wall, on the wall. So God is putting on boxing gloves. I'll never forget several months ago being in Pensacola and preaching. And I found myself in my fatigues and with my boxing gloves on. And I kept going up and down, up and down, up and down the aisle. Okay. I, kept going, I kept going up and down the aisle. And I'd go three-fourths way up, and I'd come back up and down. And at the end of the service, there were warlocks sitting right back there on, on, the, on the seats. And they said to the pastor's wife, we heard your voice that said, we know who you are. We know who you are. You better know who we are. Because unless you come here for deliverance, unless you come to get saved and get your act together, you do not belong in this group. You do not belong in this group. So this is the difference between prayer warriors and intercessors. Now you got the prayer warriors, and take, take hands. Do you have hands together? Now when you're a prayer warrior, this is exactly what happens. You got the pastor and wife, and you got everybody in the middle. But how can you see the enemy coming from here, from here, to here, to here, if you're looking inward at the pastor? Now turn around, prayer warriors, the other direction. Make my day. You mess with my husband, you're messing with me. You mess with my family, you're messing with me. You mess with President Trump, you're messing with me. You mess with my nation, you're messing with me. Do I make myself clear? God says no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up, he gave you the authority to do something about it. He gave us the authority to take our nation back. He gave us the authority to put our president, President Trump, back in his place of, of, of honor, back in his position in the White House. Oh, but what, what can we do? There's nothing we can do. Well, we're not, we don't play pat a cake with the devil. We don't play pat a cake with demons. We take our authority and say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. So you got prayer warriors now are no longer prayer warriors. They're intercessors. Because they're no lo longer looking at the pastor and not seeing it. So they're coming under attack. They see people coming into the church that don't belong. They see a bunch of shenanigans going on. They say, you know what? Satan, if you're going to try to hit them, you're going to hit us first. We'll take the punch. We'll take the punch. We'll take the punch. My husband used to get up for decades, and he said, I've never heard of somebody being up all night praying. I've never, ever known somebody to be in prayer night and day. He says, I've never been under any attack at all. And I'm like, that's because I took it for you. 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 Why, like Dr. Miles says, am I, are, am I in a high rank of a lieutenant in the army of God? Because I've been faithful. Because I've been obedient. Because I've taken the hits. And now, just like going to Rizal and going into an atmosphere that changed history, now the Lord says you're no longer a student. You are now a general. You now have a high rank. You now are in a place that if I say I need to, you to be possessed like Reese. You're, uh, that you can 
I know that you'll be obedient, that you won't compromise. When they say, here's a glass of wine, you say, no, thank you. When they say, no, we, everybody's doing it this way, and everybody says it's okay, you say, it might be okay for you. But for me, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We've got to come back to convictions. We've got to come back to the altar of the Lord. So remember, intercessors and you that are signing up for the army when you leave, even if you don't belong to this church, pray for this bishop. Pray for his wife. Pray for Pastor Mike and his wife, for Camilla, and for Dr. Miles, and for Linda, and Mary, and Ray, and pray for my husband and I. Because no, it's not easy. There have been times, even before I went to Reese Howe, I literally at times would say, Lord, if you don't help me raise up an army, this is too hard. It's too intense. I'm 64. I, I mean, I've said to Linda, whew, I'm glad that we got the prayer line. I'm glad I've got you, Dr. Linda. Because there's times that you literally want to say in ministry, please just take me home. I just want to see you. I just don't want to put up with the nonsense. But God is raising up a faithful army. He's raising up people like Dr. Linda, and he's raising up a group that says we will stand together, and we will build a militant army to the army of the Most High God. I praise God for you, Dr. Miles. I pray God, God, praise God for you, Camilla. And I want to tell you something. You want to be in that abode? Go get. Go get, this, go get the scars. Go buy the books. Buy the books from, from Pastor Mike and his wife. Buy the books from this first lady. Buy them. Because literally you might say, I wish I could take them with me. When you buy their scarves, when you buy their books and you put them beside your bed, literally the enemy says, Phew, I could mess with them before the conference, but I don't think so. I can't do it now. I used to have at my front door and somebody moved it and I've got to figure out where it's at so I can put it back. But I had a, a, I had a, a mat at my front door that said President Trump. And literally, I would have on my door, and I'm still going to put it back on there, I took Dr. Miles' restraining order, and I plastered it on my front door. I didn't put it in the back of my door when I saw it when I came out. I put it at the front of my door, so any demonic powers or anybody that thought that they were coming to my house and messing with me or messing with my husband or had something to say or wanted to bull me around would see something when they came to the front door and go, Ooh, wrong house wrong house wrong house because there's a line in the sand and God is raising up us to realize that you are his restraining order you are his line in the sand you are his army you are his remnant he's so proud of you but again like Pastor Mike said it's in a place of obedience it's a place of waiting in on the Lord it's in a place of worship why do we get beat up because we're doing low level warfare we're doing low-level war warfare. We're not getting up in the morning early seeking his face. We're not ministering and spending time in the word, spending time in worship, and going up where we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. When you're seated in, with Christ in heavenly places, every principality and power is under your feet. It's beneath you. It's beneath you. But when you don't do that on a daily basis, and you come under attack, and you can go, no weapons form against me, whatever, and you might get somewhere. But you're doing low-level warfare, and you're going to get beat up. But so let's go up higher into a place through the cross that God has ordained for his covenants and sons to live in. God bless you. Love you. And I'm going to give these gloves to the First Lady. And as we, because you're the first lady, and let me tell you something, women, even though God has called men to be intercessors and you need to birth too, but the ladies are the one, the first lady is the main intercessor in her congregation. So I want you to take your authority and absolutely kick the devil to the curb. And then I want Dr. Miles, you to finish it off with a divine restraining order against any assignment or anything that would try to come even on you, your families, your ministries, your businesses, and anybody that's connected to this conference.
Father, we step in the dimension called the courts of heaven. And we around this war are petitioning for a restraining order. A divine restraining order against all demonic backlashes concerning the Fodongs, the Lord. And after we, that by Monday, there will be no demonic tower. There will be no demonic backlash of any kind. Not because the enemy will not try, but because there is a restraining order. Amen. That we as the body of Christ are petitioning the court of heaven to release. Lord, we're asking, we're petitioning you for the same kind, the same type of divine restraining order that was upon Job. So strong, that even Satan complained, it is too strong, I can't even touch him or anything he has. We petition you, God, for the same different restraining order on these on this couple that has brave that has that, that have brought us to the front lines of the battlefield that has brought that have built an altar where many have been transformed and more will still be transformed as the weekend goes on the name of jesus father i thank you for a divine restraining order to protect pastor benny the name of the pastor suzanne the name of jesus that we the body of christ we declare and declare and we will be a restraining order in, in their life. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. We bless you, Father. We bless you. Oh, the name of Jesus. I think everybody should pray. I feel the spirit of intercession is falling. Mantles of intercession are falling. Mantles of intercession are falling. The cloud of witnesses who are intercessors in the kingdom are here. Randebo Kaba. Father Nash is here. Rhys Howe is here. Katara Ruth Heflin is here. Gwen Shaw is here. Those men and women of the cloud of witnesses who carry mantles of prayer. The Lord said, Anna, the prophetess, who lived in the temple day and night, is here in the cloud of witnesses. And she's making available her mantle. They are here to drive away the spirit of prayerlessness that has bewitched the body of Christ. Go! You spirit of prayerlessness that has bewitched the body of Christ, go in the name of Jesus. Kataba hiki, manda kiki biki kiki biki kiki, handa kahindi kiki biki, sata handi kiki, haba hante keki, landa mahiki, anda laba hiki, sambo hoka, mindi hiki ki mansopa, sandala bahiki. Makehendo, Manda Hakiki, Sakaramendo, Mende Hiki, Akabahando, Sandalebe Hiki, Manda Robo Hoka, Shakahand, Sherebe Mondo Robo Sukaraba, Hirebe Kendebo Sakahata, Mandelebo Kakabakata, Makande Rebo Kakababa Sate. Raka bahande bobo kata baba ba sate. Kabra baba ba sika hande. Kanda baba baba ba sika hende. We command you spirit of slumber, prayerlessness that has rested, arrested the knees of God's people, that they will not kneel in prayer. Go! Shaka baka tebo, ika hande, maka hande, sada hande ya kihite, yenda raba hinde, kanda ba hiki bo, shanda raba ika hande, hita rande bo saka, manda haka hande, ika hande bo haka. 
Let's pray that God is going to use Pastor Benny in in an unusual way tonight. Haka bahande boka. He can hande boka hande. That he will touch realms of the glory he hasn't touched in a long time. He kabaha saka bahando inda bahiki manda haka mandele boka nde rebo maka hande be kande bu kinda ba kande bu akara mande. Ika hande buka hande. Ika hande. Mandele be shaka hande. Ika hande. Ika hande ba kate bo. Mandele be kande bo. Shaka hande bo. Eka hende bo sata. Keta ba hende bo kaha. And the Lord says, the anointing of Deborah is upon us. And the Lord says, he wants us to pray against the spirit that has come to put men in dresses and terrorize America. The enemy has confused the constellations so that females feel like they are men and male men feel like they are, they are female. This is a messing, this is a witchcraft where there is a shifting of the constellations. Because gender is connected, said the Lord, to the constellations. Now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that there will be a shifting of the stars. That there will be a shifting of the stars. And we command the spirit of men in dresses, drag queens, get out of America. Get out of our school, children, our schools. Stop bullying our children. Your spirit that has put men in dresses go go in the name of jesus we you we push you back to the very pit of hell where you came from in the name of jesus no drag shows in front of our children the devil is a liar get out in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we command the spirit of the cross dresser the spirit of the cross dresser go in the name of jesus we release the mantle of deborah against you we release the mantle of deborah against you for the stars are fighting in their courses against the gender dysphoria the spirit has brought upon our children by misaligning their stars in the name of jesus the name of Jesus. 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 I'm not. You want me to go? Do you want me to go? At the end, it will be better for you. It will be better for you. It will be better for you.
Kakaba handle. Kakaba handle. Kick a handle bohaka. Shaka handle. Manda bakande. Manda bakihita hakaba. Ika bahando. Shita bahande. Kanda bahake bahasa. Ika handle bosaka. Mende mantles are praying from the cloud of witnesses. Mantles of intercession are falling. Ita bahando. Shaka hende. Shita handa bahiki. Kabahanko bohoka. Shika hende behaka. Manda haka hiki boho. Manda haka hinda boka ha. Shaka hende bukande. The Lord says He wants you to contend for the powers of the kingdom to come. He wants you to contend for the powers of the age to come. Rika henda bahaka hinde. Hika hende boka handa. Ita hende boka handa. Shata hende. Manda baka hende. Shaka bahando. Ika bahanto bohiki. Shinti miriana. Monti kikin pipi and tutu pie. Pampariano pampariemo tontori mumie. Lende matutushi bakarianta tantariama. Mentotusiaka paparionto popopie. Lete tantushi katarinto. Tantarinu tontomiata bababiento bobabiete. Cantaremu antatisu. Tantalieno tontoremu. Kinkariana mando pipi. Papariana manto sutu. Lende marimu katebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebeb
in the back of hand up for I shall soon judge Satan under your feet Katahanda Iketebe Kata in the Rabahiko Shekebe Manda Bahaka Tantaramako Intea Yekeboka Mando Bosakata Mande Bosakata Katahito Peke Yantaka Kata Pikiti Pikiti Mate Rebekete The cloud of witnesses who men who have carried who manifested demonstrated the powers of the age to come are in the building Moses Elijah Elisha Philip Shikete Beke Kitobo Po Kita are in the cloud of witnesses are in the cloud of witnesses are in the cloud of witnesses they are here they are here to testify there's more to the power of God than just healing and deliverance and prophecy Noah Kataba papi kataba kate. Kitebe koks ya. Shatebo kianda. Kakaraba baba. Itebebe. Kitebo kekete. Manderebe. Very strong. I'm very strong. Shakete Bikata Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. 